Storytelling is such an outdated art form. I heard that little Yin Ching. Huh? Seriously? When is this war dance going to start? The Sky Splitter has been hovering there for ages. When can we board and see what's inside? Is this how long life species live? Everything proceeds so slowly. The effectiveness of anticipation in my emotional center is at an all-time high. Oh, I need to drink some coolant. Relax. The Realm Keeping Commission will send boarding notices to all ticket holders. The Gazette said the Sky Splitter will fire a salute before the ceremony starts. I saw the schedule for the first day of the tournament. Can you believe the Ringmaster accepted four challenges? And he's just a kid. So, who are you betting on, Bardo? I'm betting on neither. I lost all my credits betting on Roboball games in Tykeon. This time, I've decided not to rely on probability games to accomplish my target of getting rich. War dance. <sighs> there you are. I heard you and Mr. Don Hung went to meet the judges, and then a riot broke out in the Shackling prison. I was so worried about you. <sighs> Thank goodness you both made it out safe. There was a revolt in the Shackling prison. Fortunately, we were protected by the guards until the Cloud Knights arrived to rescue us. I was planning to take Miss March and Yun Li to Stargazer Navalia to see the Sky Splitter up close. But we stumbled upon a group of suspicious Foxians carrying official identities. They were acting strange, so out of curiosity, we decided to follow them. It turns out they were actually Boris and disguised as Foxians. It seems they infiltrated Stargazer Navalia in order to prepare for Hule's escape. And we foiled their plans by pure chance. I wonder who provided them with those disguises. And how many more Borison have taken advantage of the war dance to infiltrate the ship? Yeah, I heard them too. But I'm afraid I'll have to disappoint them. I've already reported to General Jing Yuan that I'll give up my role as the Ringmaster. The security of the Lafu is more important to me than anything else. I need to fulfill my duties as a Cloud Knight Lieutenant before taking on the honor of being a Ringmaster. Those tourists just want to see some good sword fights. Anyone can participate in this kind of tournament. It doesn't have to be me. The real challenge lies beyond the ring on the Sky Splitter. If we don't capture the fugitive soon, Hule will wreak havoc. Obviously. There's someone behind the scenes orchestrating this prison break, intending to spread chaos. If we fail to thwart their evil plan, what honor will be left for us to uphold? Well said. You may be tiny in stature, but your ambition matches that of the Yao Qing's warriors. Hey, th this has nothing to do with my height. Yes. I suggested to Yan Qing that we find a place to have a decent meal. A hunter must be well fed before the hunt. You still have a good appetite, even in the face of disaster. You truly are the Merlin's Claw. Please finish the food quickly so we can get to work, General Feishao. Well, that's not up to me. Dig in. I called you here so you could enjoy the food. Me? Uh, this isn't the time for a leisurely meal, and this is way too much for me. <laughs> oh. You'd give me time to enjoy a meal, but not yourself? Ever since you encountered those Boris and spies, you've been so busy that you've hardly eaten anything. You can't defeat Hule on an empty stomach. 
Take your time. Enjoy the meal and calm yourself. Uh, Hule's whereabouts are still unknown, and they've even taken Mr. Zhao Cho hostage. The longer we wait, the more complicated the situation becomes. Zhao Cho always said I'm the most impatient person among the Cloud Knights, and I can't argue with that. So, there's no reason for you to be more anxious than me. I've fought against Boris and Abominations for years, and I know their ferocity and cunning well. The Borsen were clearly well prepared for this prison break, and now they are staying in the shadows. They have no reason to rush out into the open. When facing cunning and ferocious prey, the hunter must be more patient, biding their time to seize the golden chance for a decisive blow. Once Hule loses his patience and reveals himself, that's when we'll strike. <sighs> But when will that time come? Like I said, it's only one meal away. General Hua Yan, the Skyfaring Commission has finished its preparations. Do you have any other instructions? Representing the consensus between the Merlin's Claw and the Divine Foresight, I'll step in as the temporary commanding officer of the seat of Divine Foresight and oversee the Six Commission's affairs on the Lofu. What is the situation at the Shackling Prison? Hule made a quick escape and even sealed the gates of the prison. As of now, the Cloud Knights have re-established contact with the staff inside. The good news is the two nameless who were trapped in the Shackling prison are safe and sound. <sighs> um, I know I shouldn't use the word great given the current situation, but I'm relieved that she and Don Hung are safe. <sighs> We've lost contact with one of the messengers from the Xianzhou Yaoqing. The Borisin have likely taken him hostage. Don't worry, Yuko. Fei Shao is leading the wolf hunt operation, and you know how capable she is. I have no doubt about General Fei Shao's capabilities, General Hua Yan. I'm more concerned about the Wardens. According to the plan, the ceremony will begin in six hours. The Sky Splitter will be activated, and all visitors will board the ship to watch the contest. But now, with Hu Lei's whereabouts unknown, Everything is filled with uncertainty. March is right, Grandpa. I heard the escape prisoner from the Shackling prison is beyond formidable. In case anything goes wrong. So, Yun Li, what do you think we should do? Well, hmm. I believe we should declare martial law and allocate manpower to search for the escape prisoners. And as for the war dance, it's better to announce an indefinite delay for now. <sighs> Your plan sounds solid, but unfortunately solid plans rarely get a chance to be implemented. I believe there are at least two parties who won't accept your approach. The first are the many travelers who have come all the way here for the war dance. If we declare martial law now, it's like declaring that the law foo isn't safe. How do you think the outsiders would react? They'd be terrified, and chaos might ensue. The second party is the staff of the Xianzhou Law Fu's six commissions. They've invested a lot of resources and manpower into organizing the war dance. Suddenly suspending it indefinitely would create numerous challenges for them. But of course, not everyone disagrees with your idea. Uh, really? The mastermind behind this incident would fully support your opinion, presumably. Hule's escape and your discovery of Boris and spies at Stargazer and Avalia. Hmm. Even a child could guess that these events were orchestrated. The fugitive is just one piece in the game. 
The one controlling the pieces wants to spread chaos and suspicion among the people on the Law Fu. If we declare martial law and postpone the war dance, we'll fall into their trap and instill fear in people even before Hulei actually does anything. So what do we do? We'll search for the prisoners while maintaining order on the Law Fu, acting as if nothing has happened. As if nothing has happened? Yan Ching said he'd assist the generals, and now he's nowhere to be found. <laughs> With the host ringmaster gone, how are we supposed to act like nothing has happened? That's why I called the two of you here. General Huayan, are you asking me to take Yan Ching's place? As the Ringmaster? You caught on quickly, Miss March. That's exactly what I mean. But Miss March is a guest invited by General Jing Yuan, Grandpa. How can an outsider represent the Lawfu in the ring? It will make the Sienjo Lawfu a laughingstock. Dear child, the nameless of the Astral Express are renowned throughout the cosmos. It's an honor to have them participate in the ceremony. Plus, Miss March is a disciple of the little Cloud Knight Lieutenant. How can she be regarded as an outsider? We can't afford to have any problems during the war dance. I'm entrusting you not only with the honor of the ring, but also with the security of the Sky Splitter. Yu Kong, please explain to them the rest of the arrangements. I am sorry for our improper management, and I truly appreciate your assistance, General. There is no need to apologize. We Cloud Knights fight on the battlefield while you judges punish the criminals. We are two sides of the same Sienjo Lo Fu, and it is my honor to serve the Ten Lords Commission. I've grasped the situation of the prison break. Now tell me more about the current state of the Shackling Prison. Borison infiltrated the prison in disguise and released the prisoners, spreading chaos. Among the judges on duty in the four divisions, Judge Shui from the Detention Division was killed and is temporarily unavailable. So, I'm taking over her duties and commanding Arumaton Spectral Envoys and Spiritfarers to quickly restore order in the affected areas. I and the two behind me? We'll go deeper into the prison to investigate. But, General, the situation inside is still chaotic and perilous. Your presence would be... It's common for Cloud Knight Generals to face danger directly. Hule has escaped, and the Yao Qing envoy is being held hostage by the Borison. His fate is unknown. This is a grave matter. Not only did the Merlin's Claw offer no reproach, she decided to go after Hule herself to prevent further calamity. I believe the Law Fu owes her something in return for her fervent determination. Hmm. How did the infiltrators learn about the location where Hule was held? And how did they time their plan just before the Yao Qing messengers were ready to escort him? Finding the answer to these questions shouldn't be too difficult. What truly matters is if we can gather the clues that lead us to the mastermind behind all of this. I understand, but I'm afraid it won't be an easy task. For a long time, this hidden force has been pursuing their own goals and undermining the security of the Law Fu. Backing down now will only encourage them to further endanger the peace here. The Ten Lords Commission will support your decision with everything we have, General. Dan Hong and Ling Sha, I'll need both of you to accompany me on this challenging journey. Well, it's part of my responsibilities as the Cauldron Master. So, where would you like to start, General? Let's start 
with those Borisin disguised as Foxians. My people have already prepared the evidence. According to Lieutenant Yenching's report, he stumbled upon a few suspicious Foxians at Stargazer Navalia. After following them, he discovered that they were actually Borisin in disguise. This is one of the bodies. <sighs> Looking at him now, it's hard to imagine how he transformed into a Foxian. My alchemist detected some... complex ingredients in his remains, which might explain how these Borisin were able to disguise themselves as Foxians. Simply put, Foxians and Borisin share a common ancestry, Although they look completely different now, there isn't much genetic difference between them. This medicine allows Borisin to temporarily change their shape into that of Foxians. So, in other words, if they stop taking the medicine, their true form will soon be revealed? Indeed. This means that these Borisin have a steady supply of the medicine within the Lafu. <sighs> the Disciples of Sanctus Medicus. Looks like the Alchemy Commission is involved once again. Hmm. When I was sorting through the prescriptions they use, I came across one called Semblance Reversion Essence. It's designed to help those Disciples suppress signs of their Maristruck forms and maintain their normal appearance. When I compared it to the medicine found in the Borsin's body... They're one and the same, aren't they? The medicinal properties and ingredients may differ, but the principle remains the same. Since ancient times, the Borisin have always sought to have more powerful bodies, regarding the Foxians as weaklings. Yet, in order to save their warhead, they were willing to disguise themselves as Foxians. <laughs> Their determination is quite remarkable. If these infiltrators rely on the medicine to maintain their disguise, then following this lead in our investigation seems prudent. Please follow me! Here we are. According to the judge, this area is not yet under control. So we should proceed cautiously. I've captured the nature of the medicine in my sensor. <gasps> Incredible strength! The attacker shattered this warden's bones with a single blow. Such brute strength is not something an ordinary Borison possesses. This is likely the work of Hulay. If I may be so bold to ask, is this Borison truly that formidable? I have lived a bit longer and engaged in a few more battles than you, Miss Lingshaw. To the Alliance, Borison have always been the most formidable adversaries. And Hule is a monster feared even among his own kind. With his strength, Hule united numerous Borison packs forming a grand army of abominations of abundance. They constantly push the Alliance's armies into perilous positions. Over seven centuries ago, I followed my mentor on a campaign against the abominations, and I personally witnessed the devastation on the battlefield after Hule appeared. Even with medicinal pellets that suppress the fear caused by his lupitoxin, Countless Cloud Knights succumbed to panic in the face of his murderous aura. They couldn't even raise a hand in resistance. If the former Sword Champion hadn't immobilized Hule with her Frostblade, the outcome of that fateful battle could have been very different. By the end of the battle, only a few of us remained. The Crimson Moon cast the sheen of blood on all. Everything I saw was painted dark red. If that's the case, why wasn't the beast executed instead of being imprisoned? <sighs> on the Sienjo Juming, 
The judges cast those unforgivable and nearly immortal abominations of abundance into the eternal flames of the stars, reducing them to ashes. Their so-called immortality is just a facade. I mean, nothing can truly defy death, can it? I just don't understand why the Lafu kept this tumor for so long, leading to the terrible situation we're facing now. But I guess I understand. The people of the Lafu are known for their kindness. Even when faced with a malignant tumor within the Alchemy Commission, they couldn't bring themselves to cut it out. Instead, they exiled the healer who tried to solve the problem to the Sienjo Juming. I understand if you hold grudges against me, Miss Lingshaw. I take the blame for the resurgence of the disciples of Sanctus Medicus. As for why Hule was only in prison, I can shed some light on that too. I'm just a healer. I'm not familiar with the past. I'd appreciate it if you could enlighten me, General. All right. Let me tell you more about it as we go. Also take the medicine? No. This is a Borison in disguise. A guard killed him before he could return to his original form. All these Borison are dressed in official attire. Besides the Cloud Knight, there were also two Borison disguised as members of the Skyfaring Commission and the Artisanship Commission. Hmm. Whoever is providing them with official identities must hold the position of power. Let's search elsewhere. Someone bit open his arteries and drained almost all of his blood while he was still alive. <sighs> Such a cruel and ruthless act. Despite being a long-lived species, Borsen are actually more like predatory beasts that must feed on raw blood and flesh. I've heard that Hule was deprived of food and water in the Shackling prison. It's hard to imagine how he managed to suppress his hunger for over seven centuries. Will the hostage from the Yaoqing be able to avoid being his meal? Such is the terrible nature of the Abominations of Abundance. We subjected him to the Forest of Swords to drain his life force. But in the end, his punishment turned into a test of our patience. Just like you said, Miss Lingshan. Casting a creature that can't be killed into a star would be a way to permanently get rid of it. But unfortunately... The Foxians didn't agree to that. Exactly. The atrocities committed by Hule went beyond mere massacres. Throughout numerous wars, we made every effort to eradicate the Borison. But Hule, with his mysterious sorcery, turned countless Foxians into his pawns, and so the Borison kept returning. The Foxians curse his name day and night, and they even use it to scare children into staying quiet. How could they grant a swift death to such a great sinner? I wonder if you know why Hule wasn't taken into custody by the Foxian majority Sienjo Yaoqing, but instead imprisoned in the Sienjo Luofu. Miss Ling Cha. As you mentioned, your mentor was an exceptional warrior and was the one who defeated Hulei. An extraordinary achievement. 
Therefore, the Marshal placed this feral beast under the jurisdiction of the Sienjo Lafu as an honor, I assume? It seems you have a major misunderstanding about this arrangement, Miss Lingshan. Allow me to explain it to you. Yen Ching told me that an IPC ship was attacked by Borison. Is this what they were transporting on the ship? Yes. The Artisanship Commission and Alchemy Commission conducted a joint examination and found that... ...the parts of this machine are made from specially refined Borison bio-tissue. I heard the Intelligentsia Guild has been researching the biological properties of long-life species hoping to make medical or combat-related discoveries. However, they haven't dared to cross any lines due to their so-called relationship with the Alliance. Perhaps to those scholars, Borison are no different from lab animals. <sighs> Maybe the Borison attacked that ship to retaliate against the Intelligentsia Guild for... experimenting on them? No. If it were only about revenge, they could just wreck the ship and destroy all the cargo, instead of allowing it to end up in the Shackling prison. It was a deliberate display to showcase the dangerous nature of the cargo in broad daylight. This way, the cargo would end up in the Shackling prison, serving as a tool for the prison break. This skill in exploiting the blind spots of others' mindsets is so atypical of them. I'm afraid the IPC and the Intelligentsia Guild unknowingly became their accomplices. Watch out! This thing is still alive! Even after suffering such severe attacks? Their imitation of long life species has crossed the line. Now, time, time to cleanse the filth. You're annoying! If it can still move, it means it wasn't damaged enough. Let's make sure it never moves again. Good stuff! Everything in this world is bleeding. Watch this awesome move! Next time. Good job! Taking damage. The sanctuary is but a vision! Break! Be of your body and mind! Good job! Time to cleanse the filth. Damage sustained. Sissing. Attack mode. Lacerate. <laughs> Armor damage. The sanctuary is but a vision. Break! You haven't answered my question about why Hule was imprisoned in the La Fu instead of the Yao Qing, General. You've been reserved in your response. Could it be that such an arrangement wasn't an honor? The reason why the Marshal didn't leave Huli on the Yao Qing lies in the very mech in front of us. Are you suggesting that there are people trying to understand Huli's secrets and use them for their own purposes? 
Just like with this mech? <sighs> well, I understand. I've heard that the Foxians on the Yaoqing share a bloodline with the Borsin. And just like the Borsin, some of the Foxians there experience an uncontrollable insanity called Moon Rage. The Marshal believed that this would be inhumane and no different from what the Borsin did, so... Exactly. While Borisin see Moon Rage as a blessing that unlocks their true potential, Foxians see it as an inevitable curse within their bloodline. Countless healers of the Yao Qing have attempted to unravel this mystery, but to no avail. Why can Borisin control the power of Moon Rage? Can we Foxians break free from this curse? These questions were asked frequently. Each questioner had good intentions. <sighs> but the road to catastrophe is paved with good intentions. To the Foxians of the Yao Qing, Hule was not only the warhead of the Borisin, but also a monster that could be the subject of much research. Hule thus became a poison that corrupted people's minds without their knowing. That's why the Marshal decided to imprison Fu Lei and the La Fu. It wasn't an honor, but rather a warning. Because such selfish pursuits in the name of good intentions once led to a tragedy on the La Fu that served as a warning to future generations. The sedition of Imbibitor Lune. <laughs> By imprisoning Hule and the Sienjo La Fu, the Marshal both suppressed the dangerous intentions of the Yaoqing Foxians and warned the Sienjo La Fu to refrain from repeating its mistake. That was a necessary trade off. The Sienjo Alliance is not solely about the Sienjo natives. Only when all three races, Foxian, Vidyadora, and Sienjo natives, form an alliance. Will there be a promising future for all? Thank you for enlightening me. Was it for the same reason that you traded off my mentor to the Xianzhou Zhu Ming, only to stand idle and allow the resurgence of the Disciples of Sanctus Medicus? You said that I couldn't bear to cut out the malignant tumor within the Alchemy Commission, but instead exiled the healer who tried to solve the problem to the Xianzhou Zhu Ming. But did your mentor tell you? Her good intentions led her to perform certain healing arts on Dun Hung, who had just finished his hatching rebirth, <sighs> so that he would regain the memories of his past life. What, what did you, did you just, just say? say? She believed that restoring the High Elder's knowledge of his past life would allow the Vidyadara to resume their duty as the guardians of the Ambrosial Arbor. Quelling the strife within their clan and bringing everything back on the right path. But just as I mentioned earlier, the road to catastrophe is always paved with good intentions. Since then, the Six Charioteers decided that the Alchemy Commission would no longer have a Cauldron Master. Until your arrival now. Uh, if that's the case, I should thank you for protecting my mentor by exiling her, General. Quite the contrary. I should be the one thanking you. Thanking me? All I ever want is to have a clear conscience. However, can long life species truly achieve that goal in their long drawn lives? For example, you were implicated along with your mentor, and forced to leave your homeland without knowing the truth. And now, with the complicated situation in the Alchemy Commission, the Alliance has spared me a lot of trouble by sending you to handle this challenging task. Shouldn't I be thanking you instead? <sighs> your eloquence is indeed impressive, the Divine Foresight. He won't even leave me any excuses to hold a grudge against you. But, let me make it clear. The Alliance sent me here to handle the business impartially, not to choose sides. 
It doesn't matter which side you choose, Miss Lingshaw. At the end of the day, both you and I stand on the side of the Alliance, don't we? <laughs> Let's keep going. These Mara-struck soldiers don't appear to be escaped prisoners. How can you tell? These soldiers are fully armed. Obviously, they didn't hastily join the battle. The messenger named Morza did say that there were two groups of attackers. The other attackers, aside from the Borison, could hide their tracks. I believe he was referring to these people. Hide their tracks? Exactly. I've engaged with these attackers before, and they used Cloud Him magic to hide their presence. Without careful observation, no one can detect them. You once warned me to be cautious of the Vidyadara Elder's influence within the Alchemy Commission. Could it be? What's on your mind, Miss Lingshaw? Well, it seems that someone provided the attackers with a map of the Shackling Prison. And considering the Vidyadara's involvement in the prison's construction, it raises suspicion about their role in this. Additionally, the fact that the Borison need medicine to disguise themselves would suggest that there are still moles within the Alchemy Commission assisting them covertly. Moreover, Forging official identities for the undercover Borson would require someone with significant authority. And the presence of assassins capable of using Cloud Him magic deepens my suspicion about the preceptors. But why would the Vidyadara collude with the Borson and Aiden who lays escape? They aim to spread chaos. They believe that only in chaos can they regain their former power and influence. Since this edition of Imbiber de Lune, the once proud dragon race has been powerless, watching their influence wane. Being a native of the Lo Fu, Miss Lingsha, I believe you understand the implications. However, I don't think the preceptors are the true masterminds. If I'm not mistaken, the one behind all this treachery is the Lord Ravager who exploited the weaknesses within the Law Fu and instigated the Disciples of Sanctus Medicus, ultimately leading to the Ambrosial Arbor's resurrection. Fentilia. Please remember, General, that everything I've mentioned is mere speculation. We need concrete evidence for a public trial. If you want to interrogate someone within the Vidyadara's ranks, you'll need irrefutable proof. So, what's your plan, Miss Lingsha? I'll send an invitation to the preceptors. An invitation? The preceptors have been inviting me for a personal meeting since my arrival on the Lafu. Now, I'll send them the remains of these Mara-struck soldiers and the route map I found in the prisoner's possession. Then, I'll ask them to meet me at Scale Gorge Waterscape. I'd like to hear their explanations. Good idea. If I were to take action, it might alert the true mastermind. I trust you to handle this matter, Miss Lingshaw. The internal affairs of the Vidyadara should remain under their jurisdiction. 
And don't worry if things don't go smoothly. Once the wolf hunt operation is over, the hidden truths will come to light. Speaking of the wolf hunt operation, I'm truly worried about the Yaoqing messenger who was taken hostage. Hu Lei was starving in the shackling prison for centuries. I don't know if the messenger can survive in that wolf's clutches. May Rainbow's blessing keep him safe. As I said, I'm a healer. But my art of healing requires the culinary arts to be truly effective. The magic of my cauldron is its ability to make all kinds of medicines into dishes that patients can eat. When simmered and cooked together, any kind of medicinal herb or ingredient becomes a delightful delicacy. Delicacy? But isn't that just one flavor overpowering the others? Well, you have a point. Let me ask you this. If there's a fussy child who refuses to eat green peppers, what's the best way to make him eat them? Stuff the kid's mouth with the green peppers and cook him alive in a pot. <laughs> you have quite the sense of humor. I've heard that you, Borison, have lost many of your taste buds during the self-modification process. So you can't experience complex flavors. Only the saltiness of blood and flesh truly awakens your appetite. It's a shame I don't have any green peppers right now. Otherwise, I'd happily stuff them into your mouth and cook you alive in a pot. I'm just kidding. The answer is quite simple. Chop up the peppers and mix them with minced meat to make meatballs. This way, the flavor of the meat overpowers the taste of the peppers. And even a fussy child can enjoy them. Can I just boil your tongue in this hot pot? I know you're trying to buy time until someone comes to your rescue. You said that Jin Liu recently returned to the La Fu, right? Well, she did come back. But, unfortunately, I also found out that she committed serious crimes and was escorted to another Sienjo ship. Do you really think you can delay our departure? by provoking Lord Hule's desire for revenge with your clever little tongue. You see Borison as savages who know nothing about the Sienjo. But in fact, we know all about your tracking tricks. Like the jade abacus you're carrying, and the side cranes in the sky. <sighs> The more hope you hold in your heart, the greater your pain will be when death comes. I wonder if you can maintain your composure when I tear your throat open. Hmm. This composure is only a temporary effect of the medicine. And it will wear off soon, right? Lord Hule! Oh, you pathetic Foxians. For thousands of years, we were the ones who allowed you to live, and who granted you civilization. But in the end, you chose to betray us for the freedom promised by the Xianzhou people. <laughs> but it's all right. As long as you catch the scent of your masters, you obediently return to us, no matter how far you run away. Run away, you said? Well, I'm not the one who's trying to run away right now. The Borisons' era has long passed. Did they ever tell you these harsh facts before giving you hope for returning home? 
Lord Hule. Now they're being crushed by the Merlin's claw of the Yao Qing. By a Foxian. They're hiding in remote corners of the cosmos. Trembling with fear like a wounded beast on its last legs. Reaching out desperately for any fake hope of salvation. Which in this case... Is you. The Merlin's Claw of the Yao Qing. A Foxian? <laughs> Very interesting. Tell me, Mock Talk. Is he speaking the truth? He isn't lying. That lonely beast was a war slave who ran away from our pack. Cannon fodder, a thief! She stole our power and used her knowledge about us to fight us using every dirty trick in the book. And she bested you, Mock Talk. Fairness is but a pathetic excuse for the dead and defeated. Hmm. Since our great pack has fallen apart, who told you that I was alive? And who sent you here? In our darkest hours, it was a prophet of the Master of Immortality, named Mangus, who showed us the way. Her guidance brought us hope. This prophet, Mangus, what does she want? The prophet made this proclamation. The Borison have been divided for too long. And only your return can unite all the packs, restoring us to our former glory. That's when we learned that you were still alive. It must have been a manifestation of the Master of Immortality! And the Prophet told us that the Foxian General of the Yao Qing would take you to her ship during the Lafu's war dance! And that it would be our best chance to infiltrate and free you from your prison. And just as she said, we did it. That so-called prophet lied to all of you. She just sent you here to die. But her prophecy has come true. Our warhead is right here, with us. Once the news about the prison break spreads, the Cloud Knights will close all the ports. You may think you've escaped the prison, but you're just trapped in another cage known as the Law Fu. Let me kill this unruly, lowly beast, Lord Hule! I assure you that our star skiffs will soon arrive. Right now, everyone in the Law Fu is distracted by the stupid war dance. So this will be the perfect chance to escape! Once you've returned to your territory, your revenge against the Sienjo ships will be within reach! Perfect chance to return to my weak and shattered pack at the mercy of a ridiculous false prophet and become a mere puppet in her clutches. <laughs> her plan is full of flaws. The only paths she has prepared for you are escape and death. Listen up. A wolf never allows itself to become prey. From now on, you'll follow my orders. <laughs> Since you are so confident that the Cloud Knights will close the ports, Jiao Cho, I'm now giving you a chance to go and see it for yourself. Go to the ports, come back, and tell me what you saw. Wait, what did you just say? But my lord! Would an alpha wolf ever listen to a cob, Mock Talk? No, I've never heard anything like that. I... I wasn't trying to defy your will. I will always unquestioningly follow your orders. Just a little pre-hunt entertainment. Don't you want to run away? <laughs> you will come back. 
because Foxians like you always obediently return to their masters, no matter how far they run away. I can't believe he actually let me go. What game is he playing? Perhaps I can try to warn the Cloud Knights. No. Perhaps I can just escape. Just as I suspected. He's testing me. The Cloud Knights must have been aware of the situation inside the Shackling prison for some time. Will General Fei Xiao personally lead a squad to capture Hule? For now, I'll do as he asked. Would you like to board my star skiff? Well, my little star skiff can't accommodate that many. But I have a larger one that will arrive in less than 15 minutes if you need it. So, where would you like to go? We need to hurry wherever we're going. The war dance is about to start, and the Skyfaring Commission is prioritizing Star Skiffs heading to the Sky Splitter. Close the ports? Why would they do that? I'm sorry, but the Realm Keeping Commission Chancery is currently closed. All the officers and officials have been reassigned to assist in the war dance. Hey, although we're short staffed at the moment, if there's anything I can do to help, please feel free to ask me. Hey there. I noticed you'd been looking at me for quite a while. Do you need my help? Understood. Please come to me if you need any help. Stop asking. I'm off duty now. Go bother someone else. <laughs> You're not one of us, but I smell a familiar scent on you. The Warhead sent me here to check on the situation. Not yet. There's no way for this tiny ship to escape from the Sienjo. Only the starships at Stargazer Navalia can break through the Jade Gate. Mokdok said there would be insiders to pick us up, but I haven't heard anything yet. The 
ports haven't been closed? What is going on? <sighs> Stalling won't help. It's time to confront Hule and see what tricks he's up to. You're back, Jiao Cho. You were closely watching me, weren't you? And if I sought help from anyone, your people would kill them. Was that your plan, Hule? <laughs> oh, exactly as you said. So, have the Cloud Knights closed the ports? <laughs> no. Hmm. They don't want to publicize my escape. I understand. It's no surprise, for fear is more deadly than claws and fangs. Especially during a festive time like the war dance. What lurks here is not a group of fugitives, but rather a pack of wolves amidst the flock. My cubs are hungry, ready to feast on flesh and blood. Reveling in your fear. Your calm facade will soon crumble. I can tear through it and expose your pathetic bones any time. There's no escape from me, Jiao Cho. Of course, you can try your luck and believe that your wits will save you. But remember, you're not the only hostage in this city. If you try anything funny, innocent people will die because of you. Now, let's talk about the Foxy in general you serve. Mock Talk says she's here for me, which means she'll be hunting me herself. Before the hunt begins, I need to know my opponent. You can refuse and play tough. Or you can cooperate and save us both some time, healer. <sighs> Good. At least you didn't try to draw attention with a scream. That way no one will die in vain. But remember, the next time you refuse me, I'll crush your healing hands, then your knees, then your spine. I'll dismantle you piece by piece until only your silver tongue remains for you to speak. Fine. I'll tell you what you want to know about her. But I expect something in return. <laughs> what makes you think you're still in a position to negotiate with me? You can torture me until I talk. Or, let's save us both some time, Warhead. Here's the question that's been bothering me. How have you managed to survive and endure centuries of torture? Borison aren't supposed to live that long. Or possess such regenerative abilities. Oh, so, is that why the Xianzhou Yao Qing wanted to take me away? <laughs> oh, to some, I'm a hostage. 
but to others, I hold the secrets they desire. Oh, I still remember. In the early years of my captivity, the Foxians came and went. They extracted my blood in marrow, trying to unravel the mystery of Moon Rage. They wanted to conquer their fear of the Borison and free themselves from their bloodline. Unfortunately, they failed to uncover the secret. So, they resorted to the most brutal punishments they could imagine. <laughs> Some seek power to destroy their enemies, while others seek power to become their enemies. Which one are you, Jiao Cho? Ah, I see. You're the most pitiful of them all, healer of the Yao Qing. You seek power to share it with others and do good. Well, then let me tell you the answer you seek. In our ancient legends, Duran, the ancestor of the Borison, was dissatisfied with his limited lifespan and power. He yearned to dominate the skies and become the master of all the stars. To achieve his goal, he sacrificed the lives of countless Borison and Foxians, pouring them into the spring bestowed by the Master of Immortality. Through a form of genetic sorcery, the water gave birth to a miracle. The Lunar Embryo. Duran ascended the birthing bed and obtained what he desired. A heart in the shape of a deep red full moon. He cut open his chest and replaced his original heart with this crimson moon. Laugh all you want, but only I know the truth behind every word. Mm. This moon heart beats within the body of every generation of the Borisim Warhead. In the ritual that decides the new Warhead, the successor cuts open the previous Warhead's chest and consumes the Divine Heart, thus possessing it as their own. Oh. Devouring is the true essence of life, allowing us to endure and thrive. It gathers the life essence of all the prey we consume, making us stronger and stronger. I thought all hope was lost after seven centuries of torment. But now, this heart is beating once again. <laughs> all right. Now it's your turn to tell me everything about the Merlin's Claw. Jiao Cho, I found you. I know I'm in no position to question your orders, but if I understand correctly, you already have intelligence about the Borison? That's right. My people are busy collecting clues now. <sighs> What's the situation, Mwadza? General, before we completely lost contact with Zhao Cho, I picked up a signal from his Jade Abacus. It won't take long before we locate their whereabouts. If that's the case, shouldn't we immediately go there and join forces to eliminate the Borison? Why are we returning to Stargazer Nivalia? Looks like your general has only taught you swordplay, not the art of the hunt. There's an old saying among the Borison. In the forest, the hunter may easily become the hunted. 
While we may call ourselves the hunters now, chasing them blindly will only make us become the prey. Are you joking, General? He's just a wolf who's been imprisoned for seven centuries. Even with his accomplices, they're no match for us numerous Lawfu Cloud Knights. How could he consider us his prey? Do not underestimate the enemy. Hule is not an ordinary Borison that can be easily killed. The advantage in numbers means nothing when we face that monster. A vicious beast who hasn't tasted blood and flesh in seven centuries is now lurking on the streets of the Lafu right before the war dance. This is what makes the situation treacherous and unpredictable. To him, the lives of ordinary people are just meat, ready to be devoured at any moment. Exactly. That is why we must succeed in our first strike or the situation will spiral out of control. You've heard of this military tactic, right? When you surround your enemy, leave one side open for them to escape. A skilled hunter must be well prepared, waiting for the prey at the most advantageous position. What would we do if we were the escapees from the Shackling prison? While we can disguise ourselves and blend in with the crowd, we don't plan on staying here for long. In this case, what do we need most now? A star skiff to get us out of the Lafu. The Borison we discovered at Stargazer Navalia were actually preparing a vessel for their escape. We predict their next move, and we take them down. Let's start from where you found those Borison and corner our prey. This is where we ran into the Borison last time. It looks the same as usual. Because I blocked all the relevant news to make it seem as if nothing had happened. Losing contact with their accomplices preparing the Star Skiff will surely put them on guard. However, the more well-prepared a plan is, the longer it takes to adjust when it's disrupted. If any Borson wants to stick to the original plan despite the risks, they'll surely come back to Stargazer Novalia to check the situation. Are you suggesting that there are Borison here at Stargazer Novalia right now? This is an automated area. So don't you think that there are a bit too many people here today? First, look at those two Skyfaring Commission staff members. They've been observing us in secret since we arrived here. Then, there's a Cloud Knight soldier, over there. Perhaps he's here for patrol, but each patrol team must consist of two members. And obviously, he is not following the rules. Lastly, there's that craftsman wearing Artisanship Commission clothing. He's unusually focused on checking that device. If you have a target in mind, let's go investigate. Who are you? Don't you know that Stargazer Navalia is on lockdown now? Hey, chill out. They're just a few lost tourists. 
But Stargazer Navalia is the shipbuilding port of the Sienjo Lafu. If the Skyfaring Commission called for a lockdown, there should be official documents proving it, right? Official documents? <laughs> of course there are. The Cloud Knights are aware that some people have infiltrated this port. <sighs> that makes perfect sense. So you're now investigating the Borison? Yeah. We've received orders from the higher-ups, so we've blocked off this area to prevent any interference with our inspection. Thank you for your understanding. Hey, you there! Please refrain from wandering around Stargazer Navalia if you're not... Oh, it's you, Lieutenant Yenching. No, not at all. Actually, I'm here to address a peculiar issue. A peculiar issue? Yeah, we've had some unscheduled star skiffs being constructed at this dock in Stargazer Navalia. Could there have been an error in the production planning for the assembly line? This is just weird. I thought all the pending star skiffs from before the war dance had been scheduled already. I'm sorry, but I need to focus on my work right now. If you have any questions, we can discuss them later. <sighs> ah, Lieutenant Yenxing, and uh, General Fischel? You're aware of the Boris in prison break, right? Yeah, I've received the news, and I'll be on the alert. Looks like you've been keeping an eye on the Sky Splitter. Have you noticed anything unusual? No. Everything is normal on the ship. Nothing out of the ordinary. You've been observing the Sky Splitter for a while. Have you noticed anything? Honestly, just watching the ship from here isn't too thrilling. I wish I could go on board and witness Lieutenant Yen Xing's contests. Speaking of which, Lieutenant Yen Xing, aren't you supposed to be on the Sky Splitter? Is it alright for you to be here instead? Thank you for your concern, but I have more pressing matters to attend to. <sighs> this is not a location for a Cloud Knight on guard duty, is it? Well, this spot offers a great view. Are you here to keep an eye on the Sky Splitter? Yes. So, it seems that some Borison have returned to Stargazer Navalia in disguise. The answer seems quite obvious. That's my suspicion as well. Remember when I mentioned that the Cloud Knights blocked all relevant news to make it seem as if nothing happened? Stargazer Navalia is not under lockdown. But on the contrary, those staff members use Stargazer Navalia as on lockdown as an excuse to persuade us to leave. This contradicts the Cloud Knights' plans. Their flimsy disguise has been exposed. Even if they try to hide, there's no way they can escape us. Why are you still here? As I said, Stargazer Navalia is on lockdown now. No. I never issued such an order. Who are you? Perhaps you haven't met me on the battlefield, but I am certain you've heard my name. Now I'm asking you a question, so answer me. Tell me. How many more of your comrades are here? Where were you planning to meet Hule? This woman. She's the general of the Yao Xing. What are you still waiting for? Attack her! Watch this awesome move! Now. Rule. 
rules are made to be broken. This sanctuary is but a vision. Break! Because I need answers. <laughs> you were our war slave, so you should know us descendants of Duran. You want me to talk? <laughs> Fine. Try whatever you want, but I assure you, you won't get anything from me. Only fangs and blood. <laughs> if I were to do that, I wouldn't be any different from you. I am the arrow that pierces the wolf's heart. I grant you a swift death. <laughs> That's exactly what I desire. Wolves that leave the pack are prepared for the fate of never returning home. But sadly, you didn't catch my partner. He will alert them. Before you close your eyes, you should know that I allowed him to escape. Because he will lead the Cloud Knights to Hule's hideout. <laughs> Is this how you leave one side open? You let that Borison escape so you could track him? This is the most common hunting tactic used by Borison. I know the methods of these abominations all too well. They always leave an escape route for their prey, allowing them to flee in fear. Then they chase them like it's a game. Borison get great satisfaction from the last struggles of their victims. Have you witnessed these things firsthand? That guy called you a war slave. What exactly have you experienced? Well, just a hazy past that I can barely recollect. Long ago, I was one of them. Not all Foxians are lucky enough to be born on a Sienjo ship. I grew up in one of the worlds where Boris and Realm, known as the Fallen Territories by the people of the Yao Ching. To the Wolf Masters, Foxians are nothing but property. Cannon fodder used to slow down the Sienjo attacks on the battlefield. But you survived. And not only that, you became the general of the Yao Ching. If I get the chance, I'd love to hear stories of your past, General. Speaking of stories, you've reminded me that now is not the time for them. Mwadza, we've sent the warning from Stargazer Navalia. What's the situation on your end? I found them. Zhao Cho is trying to stall Hule, and he signaled me to not reveal myself. 
Trust his judgment and keep watching. We'll be right there. I believe the warning we set will stop Hule from attacking Stargazer Navalia. <sighs> what will he do next? The hunt is not over yet. Stay safe, Jojo. Please, save me. <laughs> I want to live, Doctor. Jojo, find the medical ingenium and give that kid a shot. Hurry! I... I see. How is the front line? The Boris and Beast ships have already landed on the Feng Hu. It won't be long before this place is overrun as well. What about General Yueyu? Any news from her? I'm her healer. I should stay by her side at a time like this. She asked me to tell you that she's not coming back. She must protect the Cloud Pier telescope. General asks you to... to save that kid. The girl fought desperately just to bring us all back here alive. I've never seen such a brutal fighting style. Her body... it's like she was split open. Just like... Oh, her blood pressure is dropping! Do you hear me, Xiao Xiao? Loud and clear! Get me some tumble dust. We've got to start the operation right now! I... I will bring her back! Is that why you're so determined to learn my secrets? Do you hear me, Zhao Cho? I do. Loud and clear. So she saved you all in that great battle on the Xiangzhou Feng Hu three decades ago. But to your surprise, you discovered her boars and bloodline while she was at death's door. Moktok told me that she was a war slave who escaped from the Eclipse Pack. Oh, what a twist of fate. Turns out, she's from the same clan as I am. Now I understand. No wonder she displayed such astounding power, determination, and cruelty in battle. Turns out it's all because of her force and bloodline. Mutt. Despicable Mutt. <laughs> and she used the gift of her bloodline to destroy the Borison. <laughs> oh. Moon Rage, a blessing for wolves. And a curse for foxes. For Borison, to have their bodies torn apart by moon rage and transform into a beast oh, is the ultimate joy. But for you Foxians with poor regenerative abilities, it means certain death. Oh, with the burning fury in her heart, that Foxian general will eventually lose her sanity and indulge in endless bloodshed. The scars on her body will not be caused by enemy weapons, but by the immense power she can't withstand. One day, she will be torn apart and die as a monster. And in return for saving her life, you intend to give everything to solve this impossible puzzle. Hule... Do you know the saddest thing about being a healer? All this time, I've devoted my life to bringing back those who sacrificed their lives. 
to monsters like you. I exhausted myself, and my hands trembled. But I believed everything I did was meaningful. But once again, they rushed into battle. And then I heard of their deaths. They died under your claws. In your jaws. Amidst the flames of crashing star skiffs. And under the Lux arrow of rainbow. Like a useless idiot. I saved a fish named Life. Out of the cauldron called death. Only to watch it struggle. Dive back into the boiling broth. So I asked myself. Why were they so eager to run toward their death? after they had recovered from their wounds. Why wouldn't they value their hard-won life? All the doubts left me feeling lost. <laughs> I can smell your desperation all the way down to your bone marrow. Eventually, I realized that their deaths held value. They placed the weight of their sacrifice on the living, granting us strength. With a coin forged by their deaths, they exchanged something more in return. Everything I'm doing now, following you so closely, is just for one reason. Witnessing your death with my own two eyes. Even your death has value. It will pave the way for a peaceful war dance and a fully cured Feishao. Hmm. <laughs> the thoughts in your pathetic head are hardly surprising. Did you already know this? Yes, I did. As Borison, we understand the value of death more than anyone. And as a healer who has witnessed so much death, you won't be swayed by fear. Mm, what a shame, what a shame. Your story actually sparked a trace of respect for you in my heart. Can you even feel respect? With your corrupted heart. Hmm, of course. Because I caught a whiff of my own kind in you. Unfortunately, in the end, you're still just a weak fox. As the wolf's creed goes, gift the wolf a dead end where new paths arise. Raise him to a doomed fate where satiation lies. The cowards in forgotten corners meet their unworthy demise. Yet the valorous in brutal battles embrace their eternal prize. That's why I'm keeping you alive for now. I want to show you how Burison truly respect their enemies. We will consume your flesh and blood, nourishing our own. We will crush your hopes and dreams, clearing a path for our hunt. Your feeble souls will witness a new future. A future that belongs to me. My lord, we received a message. Our arrangement at Stargazer Nivalia has been discovered. We must act quickly! <laughs> that doesn't surprise me at all. Hmm. Mock talk. What's that noise? It's the Sky Splitter! The ship that the Wardens will be held on is about to set off! 
The Sky Faring Commission will clear the air routes. And if our star skiffs try to escape, we'll be spotted. Calm down, Moktok. Look at you now, hiding and fearful. Where is your Boris and dignity? As I said, I'd sacrifice my dignity for your return. As long as you can come back to the Boris and Pax, there's still hope. Hope? <sighs> the Borisan have forgotten the Wolf's Creed. Weak creatures put their hope in the strong, but the strong fight their way out. Bringing me back instead of choosing a new master only proves the decline of our pack. And as for the prophet who manipulated you into saving me, she's just a liar trying to use Doran's offspring. <sighs> Mock talk. Let me tell you how the Burisan will rise to power. We won't hide like rats in the streets of the Xiangzhou. We will be ravenous wolves, walking amongst a herd of lambs with our fangs bared. But, Great Warhead, our packs are not here. We can't go to war like this. Our packs are not here. Wherever I go, everyone is the pack. <laughs> Stay away. Just don't come any closer. No! <laughs> Mock talk. We're the apex predators at the top of the hierarchy. As wolves, we create fear. We don't become servants to it. If you're blind to the path, I will be the crimson moon that lights the way for you. Share my crimson blood with our brethren. Use it to infect those Foxians and strike fear into their hearts. Now, you devious monkey, come out and face me. Chao Chao. Mosa. Run. No, he can't run, and neither can you. <laughs> You've come at the right time, monkey of the Yao Ching. Tell your general. Tell her that I will unleash a massacre here, drowning the Xianzhou La Fu in blood. From this moment on, wolves bearing my blood will hunt on every street, feasting on the followers of that devilish archer. Follow me, my cops. We shall stride among the prey. Give the wolf a dead end, when new paths arise. Raise him to a doom fate, where satiation lies. The cowards in forgotten corners meet their unworthy demise. Yet the valorous, in brutal battles, embrace their eternal prize. Do you hear that? The rumble of the cannons. Oh, it brings back all the memories of past battles within me. My return will bring back the Wolf's Creed. In my own way, I shall save our weakened pack and restore it to its former glory. Like 
like my eardrums are going to burst. Well, how could they expect to attract people to come and watch if they didn't make a huge spectacle? <laughs> March, you haven't forgotten what you came to do, have you? As a representative of the Sienjo Lafu, I will defeat all challengers! That's the spirit. Sounds like you're all fired up! If you could just keep your legs from shaking so much, it would be more convincing, March. As the saying goes, the disciple takes the toil of their master. Remember, you are here under the identity of a Lawfu swordmaster, taking the place of your no-good master Yenqing as the ringmaster. But what am I supposed to do if my opponent for this round is super talented and just wipes the floor with me in seconds? I'm still a beginner in swordplay. I don't know where I got the confidence when I agreed to help General Huayan. Come on, there's no need to worry about that. If you are defeated, then your opponent shall have to answer to me. Although, if that happens, the honor and the glory of the Sienjo Lawfu shall all be taken by the Jooming. <laughs> oh, Master Yun Li, please, I'm about to compete. Can you say something that will give me a little confidence? March, think about the great storms that you, Nameless of the Express, have weathered along your many journeys. There's no doubt that you have faced far more terrifying enemies than your opponents here today, right? Don't you feel a lot more relaxed looking at it that way? I've trained hard in the art of swordplay over these few days. It's time for me to get in the ring and prove myself. Let's go! Master Yun Li, I don't think I'm completely ready. March, there is no such thing as completely ready. Miss Yun Li, Miss March, this way, please. I was informed of your arrival by Madame Yukong and came to greet you personally. The news that you will be the ringmaster in place of Lieutenant Yan Ching has been made public, Miss March. Just now, as I passed the contestants' hall, I overheard them all discussing this news. The most common question I heard was, Who is March 7th? If they ask you this, how will you introduce yourself? Do you have something prepared? March 7th! The invincible March 7th! <laughs> Next time you try to bluff like that, at least make it convincing. <laughs> I see you are both quite relaxed. Impressive, given the imminent danger you face. Miss Yun Li's contestant information was registered for the war dance a long time ago. However, as a last minute entry, the Skyfaring Commission has taken care of the necessary procedures for you, Miss March 7th. Please, follow this path. The contestant hall is just up ahead. Thank you, Miss Shikwe. Come, let's take a look around the contestant hall. So, <laughs> this is the contestant hall. Oh, there are so many people! March. Before the war dance begins, allow me to give you one more lesson. My grandfather always told me that a weapon mimics its master. That means that a person's weapon will reflect their habits and personality. You've seen me wield old metal before, haven't you? Tell me, what did you observe from that? Master Yun Li's old metal is taller than a person. Being able to wield a weapon like that must mean that you have ridiculous strength, right? 
Observing the weapon that your opponent uses, assessing what kind of battle skills they excel at, and where their weaknesses lie, is the key to victory in battle. A shockingly heavy sword like mine, for example, is obviously not suited for a long, drawn-out battle. So, it would be best to find a way to drag the battle out. Why would you tell me your weakness? That's the only way to ensure that we have a fair fight, don't you think? I don't want to see you go and lose to someone else, after all. Now is a perfect opportunity to learn how to evaluate your opponents. Let's use the people here in the contestants' hall to practice. If you know yourself and know your enemy, you will not lose in a hundred battles. Know myself and know the enemy. Let's see, who should I ask first? I came here because I wanted to meet the great Lieutenant Yan Ching I've heard so much about, and finally cross blades with him myself. Who would have imagined that he would take a disciple and have her be the ringmaster in his place? This is no more than running away from a fight, and is a great dishonor to the Yao Ching. This last-minute replacement, March 7th, who exactly is she? If I'd known I could use multiple weapons at once, I'd have brought my bow. Hello, miss. Are you here to take part in the Ringmaster's Challenge, too? That's right! I'm the March 7th that everyone's been talking about! What? You're March 7th? Don't worry. I'm a newbie Swordmaster who's only been practicing the art of swordplay for half a month. March 7th. Standing before you is a seasoned Cloud Knight who has practiced swordsmanship for over 200 years. Tricking the opponent into underestimating me is a valid tactic too, right? Hmm. <clears throat> uh, was there something you wanted to ask me? Ah, yes. Yeah, this is just a regular Cloud Knight Devastator Glaive. Oh, I understand what's going on, Miss March 7th and Miss Yun Lee. <laughs> I'm actually not a contestant. I'm just here as a security guard. Oh, it's all right. I can't bear to watch other people make things awkward, so I always try to keep the conversation going. But then, I'm the one who ends up making things awkward. I've gotten used to it by now, so don't worry. There are still many guests arriving here. Please be cautious. Understood. Ugh. I am not used to wearing clothes like this at all. Oh, you're March 7th, the stand-in for Lieutenant Yun Cheng, correct? That's right. And you are? As you can see, I am the journalist entrusted with interviewing contestants on site. I see the Sky Faring Commission has really gone all out as the host. Interesting. That's right! A big event like this just can't go ahead without a few of us running around. <laughs> Since the competition is getting started, could I ask you some questions that are on my mind? Know yourself and know your enemy, right? <laughs> if you accept my interview, you'll learn all about yourself. First, the question that is on Everyone's minds. Lieutenant Yen Cheng is not appearing in today's war dance. 
This is just gossip from unreliable sources, but I hear that Lieutenant Yancheng is seriously injured. Is this true? Uh, my apologies, this was very unprofessional of me. I see that Lieutenant Yancheng has his own affairs to tend to. Then, let us look forward to seeing a valiant performance from you, Miss March. Once the war dance begins, you will be challenged by master swordsmen from many different worlds, Miss March 7th. Are there any that you're looking forward to facing in particular? May I ask who that might be? So March 7th is ignoring everyone around her and is declaring her will to challenge the Merlin's Claw of the Xianzhou Yaoqing. Thank you very much for accepting my interview. Much appreciated. The first round of the war dance is about to begin. Are you feeling okay, March? Me? I'm fine. As soon as I saw all these people gathered here, I suddenly felt weirdly relaxed. Just make sure to maintain this composure when you go in the ring. I understand why you wanted me to know myself and know my enemy. I don't feel as nervous as I did before. So, do you want to go out and see the ring? I knew it! Let's go! If we walk through here, we'll be able to see the War Dance's official venue. Oh, so this is what it's like from the spectator seats? Look over there. That's the ring we'll be standing on. Master Yun Li, I... I'm getting nervous again. Can I really do this? Well, it's too late for nerves now. It's almost time. Almost time for what? General Huayan gave me. Oh, my heart starts racing like crazy. What do I do, Master Yunli? It's when it stops beating that we need to worry. <laughs> Just take in the atmosphere and prepare yourself. I have to leave for a moment and do some inspections around the ship. This was also part of Grandpa's orders. I wonder how Master Yan Ching is doing over there. Hey, focus. General, report. The teams are in position. And the Skyfaring Commission has taken control of the Starskip lanes. Activate all side cranes and have them scan everyone coming in and out of the port. Remain vigilant at all times. Any suspicious movements must be suppressed as quickly as possible before the situation gets out of hand. Yes, General. You two, follow me. What's a signal's nearby, but we lost contact just a moment ago. Did that mean... He will be fine. Cloud Knights, search for the target. <sighs> All of you, get out of my way. Wait. 
Don't go any closer. General, I failed you. That mad dog left me here as... A declaration of war. That's right. I've been holding back the urge to slit his throat all this time. Well, Lord Hule ordered us to remain here, just to see. If you, the Great Merlin's Claw, mortal enemy of the Forison, are able to join him in a little hunting game... <sighs> hunting is not a game. It is a battle of life and death. Are you ready for your death, abomination? Die, you lowly beast! Die! Save your breath! <laughs> Nap time. Try that again! Made to be broken. Think you've won. Wowza, are you okay? I wasn't able to save Zhao Chao. Hule was more cunning and powerful than I imagined. Tell me. How is he planning to declare this war against me? With a one-on-one -on -one duel? Or with a hostage exchange, maybe? Hule is planning on attacking the bustling streets of the Xianzhou Lawfu. What did you just say? Impossible! Even if there is still undercover Borison that we haven't sniffed out, Hule can't have more than a few dozen people. How is he planning on simultaneously attacking the streets of the Xianzhou Lawfu? He has an ace up his sleeve. Hule's body holds a plague mark passed down through generations of Borison. I've seen him convert a Foxy into a Borison wolf trooper with my own eyes. This is Hule's declaration of war. His blood. It can cause Foxians to rapidly transform and lose their minds. He has passed his blood to his minions and is planning to spread it across the Law Fu and stir up panic. He wants to encircle us in one fell swoop. This beast is truly unpredictable. Contact the Skyfaring Commission and the Cloud Knights right away. Have them enforce a traffic ban and order all Foxians to remain indoors until further notice. The moment you see your enemy's declaration of war, it means that they have already begun to take action. But... If Hule succeeds in getting this panic to spread... Do you remember what I told you before? Hunting is about thinking the same way as your prey, not just mindlessly chasing after them. What Hule wants is to see everyone on the Lawfu descend into panic. He wants to see us lose our minds and waste our limited manpower scouring every inch of the Lawfu for signs of an attack until we exhaust ourselves. It's like that party game that the people of the Yaoqing love to play. They hide an object under one of several bowls, then move the bowls around and have you guess which one the object is underneath. The way I see it, this is all nothing more than misdirection. <sighs> no matter what Hule does, there is one truth that cannot be changed. He is trapped aboard the Sienjo Lawfu. The only way for him to escape is to find a ship. Right now, the only ship he'd be able to see is the Sky Splitter. In his eyes, that ship is full of countless hostages. That would be the best place for him to go. So, that will also be our final battlefield. But if we're wrong about this, if he goes somewhere else or 
If he does as he said he would, and his minions infect the Foxians everywhere with wolf blood, what do we do then? Are we just supposed to abandon those less likely locations? This is another lesson that you must learn outside of swordplay. Weighing your options and making a decision. There are always questions that we will ask ourselves, but never be able to answer. Before making a decision, we must destroy any hesitation that we are holding on to. Once we make a decision, we must fight off any regrets. There is a chance that we will make the wrong decision and allow our allies to be sacrificed in vain. There is a chance that we will predict our enemy's movements correctly, yet underestimate their strength and be overwhelmed in battle. But being lost in hesitation and failing to take any action will always be more harmful than taking the wrong path. We must make a decision, no matter what. Everyone, listen up. I will personally take charge of Starskiff Haven, evacuate the people, and prepare for any possible attacks. I will do my best to ensure that things are safe on the ground. Nameless, please lend us your strength as you did when the Ambrosial Arbor was reborn. I need you and Wildza to go in search of Zhao Cho. General, please entrust me with the safety of the Sky Splitter. I was originally meant to participate in the tournament, so now it is only right that I return to the Sky Splitter. If Hulei does come to attack the Sky Splitter. Lieutenant Yan Ching, I need you to hold him there until I am able to arrive. Please rest assured, General. If he dares step foot on the Sky Splitter, I, Yan Ching, swear on the blade in my hands that he shall not escape. Cloud Knights! The Borsin have arrogantly decided to challenge us on Sienjo territory. They vow that they will unleash a bloodbath along the streets of the Sienjo. The unarmed civilians of the Sienjo and countless visitors from afar are under our protection. Let me ask you, as Cloud Knights, will we allow the Borsin to succeed with their plan? Be on your guard! Calling Starskip Haven. Have all Cloud Knights be on full alert for Borson attacks! Seychelle, the ports of Starskip Haven are crawling with wolf-like creatures. They're moving fast. Hold them back! I will be there immediately! There you are, Faisal. Madam Yukong. After 30 years, we find ourselves fighting side by side once more. It's been a while since I've let loose. Let's get this started. Um A short respite, then time for the next fight. Let's save some time. A short respite, then time for the next fight. We have cleared out the enemies in Starskiff Haven. But it seems that there are fierce battles being waged at both the Exalting Sanctum and Arum Alley. I will prepare a Starskiff. We cannot allow the fighting to continue. 
This is now a race against time to stop this farce that Hule has created. I know Zhao Cho always wants me to know my limits and not get carried away, but now is the time to bring this to a swift end. Contact the Exalting Sanctum. Tell them if they see a light in the sky, all units are to retreat immediately. Madam Yukong, lend me your bow. Mess. I just knew it would end up this way. Every time she hits the battlefield, she makes a mess like this. She didn't even leave a single survivor to get intel from. One of these men must have known about Hule and Zhao Cho's whereabouts. That was one of Fei Shao's arrows. Who knows what she used as an arrow to fire all the way over here. She's... She's just very... passionate. She sees every place as a battlefield where she can unleash hell. Take a good look around. If you can find one or two Borisin that aren't dead yet, let me know. I don't care how tight their lips are sealed. I always have a way to crack them open and get the information we need. What a terrifying attack. Who could have imagined? That such astonishing strength would lie in the hands of a Foxian war slave. So decisive. So... brutal. She is more like a descendant of Duran than we who have fallen to our current state. No wonder the warhead has his eyes on her. I remember you, Mok Talk. You are harder to kill than a cockroach. But the fact that you have willingly shown yourself saves us some time. It is not too late for you to surrender. Tell me, where are Hule and Zhao Cho? <laughs> Save your energy. The Ouching Monkey. If there is one principle that we beasts know well, it is that we might have to break off an arm to break free from a cage. Today, I will be that arm. I lived as a hunter for many years, yet I have only followed the warhead for this recent brief period. However, his existence has brought light back to our once blind eyes, like the moon of Verdantia. He has shown me the way. The descendants of Duran have abandoned the Wolf's Creed. In order to ensure our survival, we took solace in the shadows 
and fed on one another. We were no longer wolves. We were no more than rats, living a dirty and pathetic life. Thanks to the gift granted to us by Lord Hule, I have shared his vision and his blood. The descendants of Duran should live for the victory of the pack, and they should die for it as well. Come, the Ao Ching man. Show me your fangs. We will fight to the death. Puh. How honorable, you mangy dog. But you seem to have misunderstood. There will be no fair one-on-one -on -one duel. Let's see how tough you are once we've put you down. It boils in my veins. Fight me! A strength like this will send me running! Just a little something. Think nothing of it. No matter how heroic your sacrifice, there is no honor in your battles or deaths, Borison. It seems that Mock Talk got what he wished for. Hule, your declaration of war is over. From now on, no matter where you run, General Fei Shao will catch you and send you to the same fate as Mock Talk. <laughs> oh, your tongue is sharper than your claws. Don't stand in my way, child. Have your general speak with me. Our little hunting game is not over yet. Stand down, Waltza. I am here, Hule. What do you wish to say? The Merlin's Claw. <laughs> Though we have never met on the battlefield, I have heard many interesting things about you, from both my men and your healer. <sighs> the people of the Xinjo must be quite brave, to allow a Foxian war slave with Borisim blood to ascend to the position of general. Has no one ever questioned that lineage of yours? Or could it be that your grand achievements were enough to convince everyone to keep their lips sealed? Claiming to have family ties with the enemy sounds to me like an attempt at asking for mercy. Hule, are you begging me for mercy? I see that it is not only the ruthless blood of a wolf that courses through your veins, but also the cunning blood of a fox. When you think about it, this was a gift from the Borsen. Anything that we gift, we are also free to reclaim. The Merlin's Claw, I shall extend a final invitation to you. I will be waiting for you 
on the Sky Splitter. Before you arrive, I will slaughter all in sight, allowing the crimson moon that has fallen dim for over 700 years to once more come to life. I will illuminate this ship with the sheen of blood and show everyone just how weak and powerless the Xiangzhou is. Then I will pilot this ship through every blockade and barrier you have prepared and begin my journey home. This ship shall be the flagship for the Borison Resurgence! Before I finish these tasks of mine, you have a chance to stop me or die at my hands. <laughs> this is the path that I have prepared for you. I accept your challenge, Hule. Because the very moment you stepped aboard the Sky Splitter, you stepped onto your path to ruin. I'm entrusting you not only with the honor of the ring but also with the security of the Sky Splitter. That's easy for my grandfather to say. But this mission doesn't seem so simple anymore. The first round of the tournament is about to begin. I wonder how Yen Qing and the others are doing. According to the plan, I should seek out the Cloud Knight soldiers aboard the Sky Splitter and see if they've discovered anything. Maybe I should take a moment to meet with March before the tournament starts. March is in the contestants lounge right now. Oh, I wonder how her preparations are coming along. Is that you, Miss Yunli? If there's anything that I can help you with, please let me know. The Cloud Knights are all in position, following General Hua Yen's orders. Very good. Although. There is one thing I want to confirm with you. Unfortunately, we don't have any means to distinguish between Borisin and Foxians. However, you can rest assured that the Clown Knights are working hard to investigate the source of forged identities. All Cloud Knights on the Sky Splitter have their own responsibilities and wouldn't dare neglect their posts. March 7th and I could already tell. It's clear that every Cloud Knight soldier we've met on the Sky Splitter is an elite warrior. Uh, your timing is perfect, Miss Yun Li. We actually just received an emergency boarding request. An emergency boarding request? It wasn't on the Sky Splitter Starskiff registry, but all the documentation checked out. Who would be boarding the ship at this time? Where are they? I'll go check it out. The Star Skiff is using the contestant docking bay. Would you like me to lead the way? No need. You have your own duties to take care of. I will be fine by myself. I have to check on this immediately. March, it's me, Yunli. Are you okay? She's still a nervous wreck. You still seem nervous. I wasn't this nervous before. It's just being alone in this lounge, I can't stop thinking about everything. I mean, not only are we taking part in the war dance, but we have such an important mission to carry out as well. March, calm down. Don't worry about your mission. You have me here too, right? I know my grandfather said that you must represent the Luafu as the ringmaster. 
But don't let that intimidate you. Ask yourself. You are a nameless of the Astral Express. You have always been free to come and go as you please. So why did you board the Sky Splitter with me when my grandfather gave us this mission? Why? Because I also want the war dance to go smoothly. For us nameless, even though we're just visitors at every stop, it was here that I met my two masters and made many new friends. I want the war dance to go ahead without any problems. For everyone's sake. Good answer. The tournament is about to begin, so I must go carry out the mission that Grandpa gave me. March, may your blade be sharp and your victory glorious. Thank you, Master Yunli. Routine inspection! All passengers, please prepare for an inspection! So this is the suspicious Starskiff. Where did the passengers go? I'm going to count down from ten. If you do not come out, I will destroy the ship. Ten. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four. Time is running out. Three, two, one! Wait a second! It's me! It's just a routine inspection. You weren't actually going to blow up the ship, were you? Is that also some kind of Zhuming custom? Yenqing claim he was going to give up being the ringmaster and go on the hunt instead? Help shoulder the general's burdens? The Borison on the ground suddenly launched an attack. General Fei Xiao was concerned that this was all a diversion by Hule, so I requested to come to the Sky Splitter and provide support. I can't believe you ended up back here on the Sky Splitter after running around all over the place. But. You're too late to enter the tournament now. Following Grandpa's plan, our disciple March is taking your place as ringmaster. Aren't you proud of her? When I first heard the news, I was definitely proud, but also a little concerned. More manpower is always a good thing, since the Sky Splitter is so large. Oh, and by the way, you should know that. What's happening? Does it feel like the Sky Splitter has slowed down? Could, could it be? Come with me. We need to check the engine room. It's the heart of the ship, so we need to prioritize its safety. Engine room is just up ahead. Let's go. Strange. Why is there no one here? The Cloud Knights, they're over here. And 
you should be lying alongside them. Don't worry, children. There's plenty of space to hide your bodies over here. <sighs> Even though I truly hoped that the war dance would go ahead uninterrupted, and that I was worrying for no reason. Now that these guys have finally shown up, it's a huge weight off my mind. Bring it on, you abominations! Yes, you! Uh. Right on time! Yes, you! <laughs> you! <laughs> you can't run! Lead through clouds! If we found two wolves in the engine room... That means that even more abominations have infiltrated other areas. Hule is already aboard the Sky Splitter! There's no time to talk about this. The War Dance has already started. If my guess is correct, the Borison will most likely use the ceremony to begin their slaughter. Let's go. We need to get to the War Dance ring. Come with me, to the ring. Watch this awesome move! Right on time! <laughs> Here! Nap time. This way, we're not too late. Special guest host, 
Mr. Albert to the stage to formally open the war dance. Surround your enemy, but leave one side open. This is your strategy for ensuring that the war dance will be able to be held as usual? Precisely. When Hule escaped, we should have cancelled the war dance immediately. No one can predict where a wild beast like him will attack. Yet festivals and celebrations like this are likely to become targets. However, Preparations for the war dance were in the works for so long, I couldn't bear to announce its cancellation. So I thought, if the show must go on, then let it go on. But that doesn't mean that the war dance we hold today has to be the real event. All we need to do is swap all the spectators and contestants aboard the ship with Cloud Knight soldiers and the Sky Splitter, soaring high above, will become the ultimate battleground for our hunt. Hmm. But what do we do if Hule is not planning to attack the War Dance? Then we just need to draw his attention to the Sky Splitter. We'll have the Sky Faring Commission clear all transport lanes and cut down Starskiff traffic. Then, when the time comes, there will be only one ship in the sky, and he will have no reason not to attack. General Fei Shao will be in charge of scaring the wolves and cutting off their other means of escape, making him think that this will be his best way out. Given that the Borisin already have insiders on the Law Fu, I will be in charge of putting pressure on them, making them focus solely on keeping themselves safe. Very good. Then I'd better dust off my weary bones, too. I will go with the Skyfaring Commission to guard the Jade Gate and ensure that things do not spiral out of control. Knowing that Elder Huayan is part of our last line of defense is a great comfort. This hunt will make Hule understand that the arrows of the hunt will always be one step ahead of the Abominations. Uh, that jolt just now. What's going on? It feels like the entire ship has started to slow down. Borison must have actually infiltrated the Sky Splitter. 
Based on General Huayan's orders, it's time for me to take action! Broken. I was concerned about the safety of the Sky Splitter, and my dear disciple, of course. Yanqing, the wolf you are hunting is standing above us in the war dance ring at this very moment, facing the Cloud Knights. This war dance will not be seen by the people of the Sienjo, nor will it be just a ceremonial sword fight. This is a battle to the death that offers no honor, only mortal danger. March. Are you ready? Please. I am March 7th, a swordmaster who will represent the Law Fu in glorious battle. Yun Li, Miss March, may your blades be sharp and your victories glorious. May your blades be sharp and your victories glorious. May your blades... Ah, forget it. Let's go and make this a quick victory. Let's go. <laughs> so feeble. So this is truly pathetic. <laughs> I've been waiting a long time for this, Hule. But something shall 
sent some young cops to the slaughter. Someone else take this one. Remember this. My name is March 7th. Ringmaster of the Law Food. Does the Senjo Law Food not have any worthy warriors? I wouldn't let my guard down if I were you. It's about time this old wolf tasted defeat at the hands of a young cub. Naughty children, you're in bad shape. Let's make it quick. Yeah! Do <laughs> not more than that, like. You think a little ambush is enough to defeat me? I will make you understand just how long. I'll take ten of you. Such insane power! You get me my opening act. Until we shall finally arrive. Time to show you what Azure Dragon, White Tiger, Less Card, what's this? Secrets are a weapon that a hunter cannot live without. Those that have no secrets are no more than prey, cut open and waiting for death. What you're saying is, in your eyes, I am no more than prey that has exhausted all of its secrets and is simply awaiting its death. Do you think you have some other escape route? <laughs> oh, Jiao Cho, I have already peeled back your disguises and defenses, layer by layer. I know all the secrets that you and your general have buried so deep. <gasps> but you have told me... All of your secrets, too, Warhead. <laughs> oh, but you will never have a chance to use them. You will be buried with them right here. Although, you are a fortunate one. After all... You will avoid having to see the tragic future that awaits your general. I'm sure she understands her fate far better than you ever will. One day on the battlefield, she will be overpowered by her ever-intensifying moon rage, and finally be torn apart by her fury and transformation. 
Not even your god can save her from this fate. Although, they can lead her to liberation. And the only way to save her is here, in my hands. <laughs> Are you the healer? Or am I? Are you really that certain of your own judgment? I must leave, Foxian. But before I go, you know what I must do, don't you? Drink blood wine. I hear it is a Borison custom to kill prisoners and drink their blood before battle to stir up their madness. You really did put hard work into researching us. It is a shame that this is where your journey ends. <laughs> Are you the healer, Jiao Cho? Is there anything that I can do for you? I heard that you saved me. <laughs> There's no need to thank me. If you're a healer, can you cure my moon rage? And what if I can? Do I just sit back and watch, as you head back out to die in battle? Listen to me, child. Your condition is not suited for the battlefield. Okay, then... then can you cure war? What are you talking about? I'm just a healer. All I can do is... So all you can do is heal us? And let us go cure war. Such arrogance, young lady. This war has been waged for thousands of years, and it will only continue. What do you mean by cure war? All you will achieve is getting yourself killed. You healers work yourselves to the bone to save people, even though there will always be sickness and death. So we will also keep fighting. I cannot speak for the dead, but I know that General Yueyu, as well as all the warriors that never returned from battle, will not have died in vain. They fought so that others could make it home alive. Your actions are no different. <sighs> Jiao Cho, this is an order. Cure me! <laughs> Those who have no secrets are no more than prey. Cut open, and waiting for death. Enjoy the taste of my fresh blood, Hu Lei. Unfortunately, I am not a man without secrets. I still have one little secret hidden up my sleeve. Tumble dust. <laughs> I drank it a while ago. And the poison is already flowing through my veins. Sooner or later, you will begin to feel the effects. If the most lethal poison known to this world is able to save innocent lives, then it can also be called a great medicine. I will do my best to cure you. Fish out. 
I kept my promise. At the cost of this insignificant life. Bring victory to the Yauchi. Chance. Someone else take this one? It's time for us to put this dog down. <laughs> Mean you cannot be overpowered. Hule, take a good look. The power of the Cloud Knights is in my blade. That's better. <laughs> just, just a little something. Think nothing of it. Don't worry about me. Right edge that some time to heal up first I hate to say it but if you can teach me that move I'll maybe admit that you're just a tiny little bit stronger than me the hunt is finally over thank you for holding out so long the cloud knights are withdrawing as we speak Lieutenant Yang Ching, how are you holding up? General, is everything okay on the ground? Everything's fine. We were able to suppress the Borson attacks. When I sensed that Hule was not on the ground, I raced to get here as quickly as I could. Who would have imagined that I would arrive late to the battlefield for the first time in my life? 
now. Perhaps you young ones' blades were just too fast for me. I originally thought, in the best case scenario, you would team up and hold this beast back while protecting yourselves. However, you joined forces and defeated Hule. Ugh, oh, the youth are truly to be feared and respected. Come, we need to lock up Hule once again before anything unexpected happens. Such an unforgettable bleed. So similar to the one wielded by that woman who defeated me all those years ago. <laughs> Over 700 years have passed. And I thought I would have a way to overcome it by now. But in the end... <laughs> my fangs and claws were too slow. <laughs> you won, child. Stop struggling, Hule. There's plenty of time for you to be tortured by your regrets when you go back to the Shackling Prison. Yes, I was defeated, but this was not unexpected. <laughs> and regardless... <laughs> Still showed your face, face show. Oh, I have looked forward to this for so long. <laughs> oh, our little hunting game has finally reached its climax. I told you before, I had a path prepared for you. You've doomed yourselves. <laughs> As I meet my demise, so shall the entire Sancho Lapo. The crimson moon in my chest will make this place shine with blood. I will drive all foxes to madness in their fear, craving slaughter without end. What now? <laughs> they shall. This is the heart of the Boris and Warhead, a product of the Plague Mark. I'll leave the next part to you. I don't understand. We can't have allowed this thing to spread. I will do all within my power to consume this crimson moon. Once the situation changes, Lieutenant Yen Ching, you are to enforce the Cloud Knight's military rules. Understood. of his own life. Snap out of it, General! The Sanctuary is but a vision! Break! <laughs> oh, it's just when I thought we'd get a minute to catch our breath. What do we do? Do we fight or run? After all this, do you still think running is an option? 
You cannot hide. Pray, I will devour you. Naughty child. <laughs> Don't worry about me. Yeah. How many can you block? You are not worth it. Fighting is meaningless. Just a scratch. I'll crush the wall. Time for a shot. <laughs> Blade and fire! <laughs> This is over. Swords descend! <laughs> Utah resistant! I will devour Time you! Time for sword play! Rules are made to be broken. <laughs> the truth of life and death. This sanctuary is but a vision! Break! Strike with heart! <laughs> Nap time. <laughs> Let's make it quick. Yeah! How many can you block? <laughs> Just in time. Just a little something. Think nothing of it. Much better. <laughs> Too late to repent. This time, I must break my promise. Is this the Sky Splitter? Or somewhere else? Lieutenant Yenqing, you are to enforce the Cloud Knight's military rules. Understood. my own eyes. Just consider me a figment of your imagination. Before every hunt, I make preparations for defeat and retreat. But not this time. This time, defeat was exactly the ending I was racing towards. When I learned your story, Chow Chung, I realized that he had always been hiding a secret, and that not even the healer himself 
survival of the fittest is nothing but an excuse. You cannot weaken my resolve, Huleg. Blinded by the fury of your moon rage, you slaughtered your allies. Merlin's claw, you have betrayed the Alliance. Your actions are no different from those of the abominations we stand against. abominations that runs through your veins. One day, you will inevitably become an enemy of the Alliance. Cloud Knights, formation! You ran into the arms of your new master's army without hesitation. You thought that you had found freedom, respect, and recognition. Still terror within me. Yet all of this is nothing but a phantom. This was just a 
dream used by someone with ulterior motives to manipulate the Borson. They would rather place their hopes of survival on an imaginary savior than gain the courage and strength to fight to the death. Borson like that deserve no more than to be sent to their deaths. need much explanation. I refuse. what it is that I truly desire. When I was just a child, I stained my hands with blood for the first time in order to escape the whips and shackles of the Wolfmasters. Sisters. 
We ran and ran with all the strength we had, but we ended up losing each other. I escaped the hunting pack and encountered a woman that could fly. A cloud knight. I imagine you kept your promise. Unfortunately, when I led her back in order to free my cooler companions, there was nothing left there but a bottomless pit. <laughs> oh, the might of the devilish archer. A star of calamity that strikes the ground and leaves only devastation in its wake. In the years that followed, I followed the trail of that light alongside my Cloud Knight allies and saw it fall countless more times. Gradually, I came to understand. That light was not some shooting star that carried wishes and aspirations. Each Lux arrow meant that countless lives in a helpless world were about to be obliterated. I prayed to the god of the sky bow that I would never have to witness one of these shooting stars fall again. But they ignored my prayers. That's right. They never answer us. They just let us loose in this world to massacre each other. That is why the fierce battle between us has raged to this day. If the gods who never bleed nor cry, who walk silently from above, refuse to listen to the prayers of mortals, then we have no choice but to fight for our own desires. Do you understand now, Saron? So, what is it that you yearn for, Hule? Why is it that you fight? I fight so that I can turn the stars above into a great wilderness for the Boris and to roam. What about you, Saran? I fight so that one day I will never have to witness another shooting star falling to the ground. So that just one more person can live and return to the Yao Ching alongside me. We are so similar. Both monsters that were born for war and will die for war. You were right when you said that, Hule. So, I shall pray to the heavens. 
Even if they do not respond to me, I pray that the arrows of the hunt will pierce the heart of every monster. Do you see me, shooting star? The knights are sworn to protect the Sienjo. I will uphold this vow until my very last day. and show you how cowardly and powerless you truly are, Hule! <laughs> A wolf lurks in the heart of every boar set in a box here. The moment you grow weak, it will devour you! I shall love you, I swear to me. Forever triumphant! Victory is inevitable! The fearless knows not fear. That won't do. Ha! <laughs> Do <laughs> it! Awaken your sword! Grow complacent, and your life will be stolen. Fight to the death, and you shall live forever! Nap time. Yeah! Is over. Swords descend. <laughs> How thick! Hit Energy. Let the hunt begin. That's better.
are made to be broken. I swear to be the arrowhead. Forever triumphant! <gasps> Victory is inevitable! Blade and flight! <laughs> you inner beast! He like man! Share your own flaws! <laughs> Just in time. Just a little something. Think nothing of it. I can breathe easy. <laughs> I'd like to hear their explanations. Welcome, Miss Lingsha. I am Preceptor Tauron. Greetings, my honored Preceptor. It's been a while since we last touched base. I've brought a friend with me today, I believe you're already familiar with each other. Tauron? What? Elder? Tauron? I remember when I was exiled, you were on the verge of passing on. <laughs> What's with this new look? <laughs> All of this is thanks to your past life. Had you not been so rash, I wouldn't have had to walk such a dangerous road to free our clan, becoming this specter of my former self. <sighs> Don Hung, you've returned twice, but it seems that meeting us fossils wasn't on your agenda. Regrettable indeed. Now here you are to meet me anyway. Life does love its ironies, doesn't it? I didn't come here with Miss Lingsha today to reminisce. 
Indeed. When the Cauldron Master extends an invitation, it's only proper for the preceptors to attend. As the newly appointed Cauldron Master, there's been much to take care of within the Alchemy Commission. It's only now that I've had the chance to speak with you. Please forgive the delay, Elder. I sent over some evidence regarding the prison break in the Shackling Prison. I trust you've already looked it over? Yes. You sent us the remains of Mara struck soldiers, a map of the Shackling Prison, and a semblance reversion essence pill. These are the remains of assassins who used Cloud Hymn magic to conceal their tracks. They aided in the Borsons' escape, allowing them unimpeded passage through the Shackling Prison. That marked up map is a map of prisoners' escape routes. Vidyadar, a craftsman, once made blueprints for the prison's construction, so I imagine, Mr. Tauran, you have a similar map in your possession. This pill. Is Semblance Reversion Essence? Indeed. I helped plot the prison break in the Shackling Prison. Oh, so, so, the Disciples of Sanctus Medicus joining forces with the Lord Ravager to stir up trouble in the Alchemy Commission, the introduction of the Stellaron, and the Ambrosial Arbor's resurrection all have something to do with the Vidyadara. That's right. Are you surprised? After all, both of you were sent here by the Seed of Divine Foresight as messengers to hear my confession, weren't you? Ever since the sedition of Imbibador Lune, the population of the Vidyadara has dwindled. With the High Elder exiled, a few of us preceptors had to do what we could to turn the tide. My methods might have been drastic, perhaps even incomprehensible. But it was all for one cause. The survival of the Vidyadara. Yet, the Sienjo natives zealously forbid any plague marks and did nothing while the Vidyadara suffered. Don Hum, Lingxia, as Vidyadara, you should understand the desperation behind my actions. All I've tried to do is to ensure our survival. I'm well aware of the challenges the Vidyadara face. Fighting for survival isn't a sin. But Elder, your actions have gone beyond mere survival. You've become a beast driven solely by the propagation, devoid of even a hint of empathy. <laughs> oh. Despite calling ourselves a noble draconic bloodline, at our core, we're merely bipedal beasts. The survival of our kind is paramount. If I hadn't resorted to beastly actions, the Vidyadara might not even exist. The sages show no mercy, as the old wisdom goes. When the High Elder abandoned our people's survival, I had to shoulder the world's sins alone. Lingsha, Don Hum, the past is behind us, but the future of the Vidyadara still lies within your grasp. The situation on the Sienjo Lafu has changed rapidly. As Vidyadara, we must unite in purpose and avoid the mistakes of the previous Imbibitor Lune. I was initially skeptical about the Vidyadra's betrayal of the Alliance. But after hearing your confession, I realized that there is no point in talking about trust. Breaking the covenant of our Alliance will bring war upon the Vidyadra. Even if we are able to have offspring again, what difference will it make? Once my plan succeeds, the Alliance will see the Vidyadara as their saviors, because both parties ultimately share the same interests. <laughs> so now that survival won't convince us, you want to talk about interests? For a thousand years, the Alliance has been engaged in brutal warfare against the denizens of abundance, yet victory has remained beyond reach. Have you ever wondered why? <sighs> Should the Alliance emerge victorious, they will inevitably become the next denizens of abundance. However, if they suffer defeat, the Alliance will face extinction. Thus, the Alliance has deceitfully upheld this precarious balance. However, I have a way to escape from this dilemma. The Alliance's path to salvation lies within the secret of dragon transmutation. Imagine if there were a way to transform other life forms into Vidyadara. 
The Alliance would then possess an endless stream of soldiers and would not need to worry about casualties. Once the war ended, these soldiers would cease reproduction, eliminating concerns of overpopulation. This is the way to salvation for the Sienjo Alliance, the ultimate path to end the universe's suffering under the Immortality Plague. Only we, the Vidyatara, can achieve this. So, you relied on this rhetoric to manipulate the ignorant members of the Vidyadra into serving you. I am deeply disappointed in you, Elder. Your thoughts and intentions are completely devoid of empathy. Cloud Knights! Hold it! Miss Bailu! Mr. Dan Hung and Sister Ling Sha! Everyone's here? You think I don't know why you're really here? Jing Yuan sent you here to test me, didn't he? According to the oath between the Alliance and the Vidyatara, it's forbidden to spill Vidyatara blood on their own territory. Are you all ready to violate this oath in the presence of the Law Fu's High Elder? Dragon Lady, there's no need to panic. Elder, the Vidyadara's sacred grounds and the High Elder are not to be used as pawns in exchange for your life. <laughs> you talk a big game. As if you have the nation and the people's best interests at heart. But when it really matters, you use a small girl as your shield. It's ridiculously pitiful. <laughs> I've said it before. Survival is never a sin. We are all Vidyatara, so you should understand my intentions. And as a Vidyatara, I will leave for you a dignified solution. Leave the Scale Gorge waterscape immediately, and appeal to the top echelons of the Alliance. Let the six charioteers hold a trial and sentence me to exuviation and rebirth. I see right through your plans, Mr. Tauron. Fityadara rebirth erases past crimes, but I'm well aware of the preceptor's dirty tricks during rebirth. You might not be you, but you will still be you. I won't forgive myself for past sins under the pretext of knowing nothing, nor will I allow you to evade accountability. <sighs> Don Hong, I've always disliked your inability to see the bigger picture. Rebirth hasn't changed you one bit. Miss Bailu, as High Elder of the Law Fu Fidyatara, please share your thoughts at this moment. I... I don't want to stay here. I'm tired of being pushed around. I'm not some puppet to be controlled. Please, take me away with you. I understand. As the oath dictates, members of the Alliance are forbidden from harming Vidyadara here. But I have long since severed ties with the Alliance. Right now, I'm simply a nameless. Free to come and go as I please. The oath of the Xianzhou means nothing to the spear in my hand. Get them! Do whatever it takes! Evil. Make sure they don't leave here alive. Watch this awesome move! Be of your body and mind. Everything in this world is bleeding. The sanctuary is but a vision. Break! Nap time. Immortality means forever. Sacred of the saints. 
Lady, are you all right? I'm... I'm fine. Thank you for rescuing me. You... You actually came here in person? Otherwise, I wouldn't be able to hear your lofty opinions. The public trial you seek with the Six Charioteers is inevitable. In addition... I'll write to the Seish Queller of the Fong Hu. With her hatred for evil, I'm sure she will make a just decision. If it's her, she will earn the respect and ascent of all the Vidyadara on the La Fu. In terms of martial prowess, you indeed have the upper hand. But if you're under the impression that this advantage can be used to settle the score with us preceptors, Ah, that's quite an overestimation. Given the Vidyadara's foundation within the Alliance, do you really think you can do anything to us? As I mentioned, I'll take all the blame and become the scapegoat. With the secrets I possess, the interrogation alone will take an eternity. And in the end, through various exchanges of interest, I am certain to survive. You understand this better than anyone, as it's the very art of trade-offs you love to wield. <laughs> Lastly, a word of caution to you. I heard that Hule has escaped from prison and is headed directly for the Sky Splitter. The bloodshed at the War Dance is bound to be gruesome. Perhaps, even before my trial, your impeachment will have you in dire straits first. <laughs> Regrettably, Mr. Tauron, the Sky Splitter only hosted Cloud Knights today. No audience. And just moments ago, Hule was executed by the Cloud Knights.
only in the bathroom for a little bit, and you've already arranged my death? Hey, can't you play some normal games with Dragon Lady? Uh, you really can't keep your mouth shut, can you? All right, enough playing. It's time to visit my masters. The infirmary is right over there. You can go by yourselves. Oh, come back and visit me when you have time. Next time, let's not play overly realistic make-believe with this doofus, okay? Well, there's not much I could do. General Feishao didn't really give me any chance to shine during this wolf hunt operation. If I had been in the ring, I could have knocked down ten Hulays with just one strike. You sound exactly like Master Yenqing. But for now, both he and Yun Li have been forced to go to the Alchemy Commission for some well-needed rest. I'm the least accomplished in swordplay, but I came out unscathed. I really ought to thank my masters for taking all the blows on my behalf. Look who's here. The beloved Trailblazer and the charming March 7th. You came to the Alchemy Commission today. Oh, I get it. You are here with March to visit her masters, aren't you? Exactly. How are my masters doing at the moment? Unfortunately, only one master is here. I'm doing fine. I'm just following the doctor's advice. <laughs> Miss Bailu said I could take a stroll, so here I am. Your master Yenqing wasn't as lucky. He's probably still in bed. Considering the intense battle with Hulei, and then with General Feishao, <laughs> the rigorous sparring session with her. His small body couldn't take it anymore. Master Yun Li, didn't you also engage in combat? <laughs> the little babies from the Lafu just don't have the resilience that us kids from the Juming have. I heard from Modza about the tough battle against the wolf troopers. Uh, you fought alongside Modza. Did you get hurt? I heard a few versions of the story from the Cloud Knights who were there. The number of wolf troopers went from a few dozen to thousands. And the number keeps rising. It's becoming more absurd by the minute. Yun Li, go and lie down. Got it, Ling Sha. What about that smiley fox healer and the guy with the hood? <sighs> Thank goodness you and the others found Yao Cho. He lost a lot of blood and needs to rest properly. He and Maoza are seriously wounded. I've had to forcibly confine them to the Alchemy Commission. All three from the Aoqing are critically injured. But fortunately, the Xianzhou Laofu has a miraculous healer lady. It's a silver lining in this misfortune. Ah, oh, it looks like the entire delegation from the Xianzhou Yaoqing is gathered at the Alchemy Commission. Why don't we go see General Fei Xiao and bring her some fruit? I would normally say no, because they need to rest. But, alas, what can you do when the two of them have a leader who is just as restless? General Fei Xiao just slipped out of the recovery room. She thinks she's so sneaky, but I know everything that happens in the Alchemy Commission. If you're looking to meet her, the Lunarescent Depths might be your best bet. I spotted her heading that way earlier. The sound of those footsteps. They must belong to General Feishao. Out and about, despite the doctor's orders. What a coincidence. Someone else who refuses to listen to the doctor's orders. 
Well, being a doctor myself, I don't think my knowledge of my own body is inferior to the Dragon Ladies. The healer does not heal himself. Don't try to act tough in front of me. <sighs> I'm sorry, Zhao Cho. I didn't expect you to use poison that way. What a miscalculation. <sighs> if only I'd found you sooner. If only I hadn't sent you to the Shackling Prison. The way you're speaking, is this really the Fei Xiao I know? Or could it be a Borisin assassin? Imitating your voice to take my life. <sighs> Zhao Cho, your eyes. You can't see anymore, can you? I can still clearly hear the sound of the waves. That's enough for me. Don't blame yourself. You know what I'm more concerned about. Has your body had any changes since you swallowed the Crimson Moon? I'm not sure. There don't appear to be any changes. However, the many doubts that once plagued me have dissipated. I never thought I'd live to hear you discuss your health again. But thanks to Morza and that child, the price I've paid seems trivial compared to what we've achieved. I hold no grievances, Fei Xiao. I am content. I don't know how to offer words of comfort, nor do I know much about curing others' ailments. I am just a warrior, so my pledge to you is simple. An eye for an eye. <laughs> so you were here too. In this vast universe, there's bound to be someone who can heal your eyes. I'll find them. But until then... The threat behind all this chaos needs to be dealt with. You must already have some ideas. Let them out. The resurgence of the Sanctus Medicus and the gathering of the Borisen... ...are merely distractions orchestrated by an unseen force... ...meant to divide the Alliance's attention. Unfortunately, they picked the wrong fight this time. Once we return to the Yao Qing, I'll personally lead the Verdant Knights into battle. I vow to take down a Lord Ravager and teach the Ruined Legion the true meaning of the hunt. <sighs> I knew it. You've always been so impatient. I apologize for my tardiness once again. The Alchemy Commission detained me for some time for a health examination. They released me only after ensuring I was in good condition. <laughs> General, seeing you safe and sound puts our minds at ease. Hule's escape caused significant upheaval and forced the war dance to be put on hold. A truly unforeseen disaster. Fortunately, the younger generation showed their valor. They bravely tackled the crisis putting an end to the disaster and providing a glimmer of hope in a dire situation. Before Master Diviner Fu Xuan's departure for the Yutre, I consulted with her about the war dance. She left a note stating, The hexagram oscillates between thunder and heaven, a sign of great power. 
assuring us that we would successfully navigate any challenges. She advised me to trust the younger generation's abilities and let them lead. Her predictions, it appears, have come true. It's just... The Sienjo Luo Fu's long-standing duty of keeping Hula imprisoned ended with his death on the Sky Splitter. This event is likely to bring much criticism from the Alliance's upper ranks. However, Hule's demise might actually be a blessing in disguise. Broadcasting this news could derail the Borison's resurgence and quash the ambitions of those who wish to take advantage of his return. Hand over Hule's remains to the Xianzhou Yao Qing, and I'll handle the explanations to the Alliance. But what about the war dance? While the Wolf Hunt mission was a success, the events on the Sky Splitter remain a secret. However, the news of the Borison's attacks on the streets will spread like wildfire. The war dance was interrupted, so it must be reconvened. As for the people who witnessed the attacks, beyond placating them, we also need to show them the Sienjo Cloud Knight's fearless dedication. On the war dance's opening day, Rogue Borison attempted to stir up panic, but was swiftly neutralized by the Merlin's Claw and the Cloud Knights. A genuine tale of heroism that will captivate and calm the public. As Elder Huayan suggests, the Law Fu will do its best to heal the wounded and compensate those who were affected. We aim to reopen the war dance in the coming weeks. This settles the immediate concerns on the Law Fu, but my thoughts linger on the orchestrator behind these events. From the onset of the Ambrosial Arbor Crisis, the Xianzhou Law Fu has experienced numerous disturbances directly linked to the Lord Ravager Fantilia. Her attempt to infiltrate the Xianzhou with the Borsen and sway the Law Fu preceptors to join the Sanctus Medicus's insurrection was unsuccessful, but I have a feeling that she is indifferent to the success of her plans. Rather than outright victory, Fentilia's motives seem to lie in breeding discord and chaos among allies. Should the Alliance fail to mend these rifts, it risks disintegrating into a pile of sand. The goal of the Xianzhou Alliance has not changed for thousands of years. Perhaps we should point the weapon in our hand toward this new adversary. I plan to bring this matter before the Marshal following the war dance. With Elder Huayang's insight, one wonders how the Marshal will react. Hmm. It's clear we're engaged in a game of chess not seen in thousands of Amber Eras. A game where even the strategists become pawns in battle where the stakes are as high as the fates of countless stars in the sky. <laughs> Predicting the Marshal's decision is beyond me, yet she's well aware of our concerns. She has tasked General Yao Guang with performing extrapolations day and night to gauge the situation comprehensively. We gather today not just to tackle the Law Fu's predicaments, but also to address a matter requiring our collective presence. Yao Guang has sent a message from the Xianzhou Yuchui, informing us that she wishes to share the results of recent calculations she made within the Matrix. Ching Yuin, I'd like to borrow the seat of Divine Foresight's chessboard for this purpose. have passed since we last convened. I've dearly missed each of you generals during this time. <laughs> Was the seer strategist thinking of us or thinking of the fates we're destined for? The Merlin's Claw. As blunt as always. Though not everyone's cup of tea, huh? You once told Jing Yuan 
You're lucky that I'm the one who came this time. If it were the Seer strategist, this conversation might not be so friendly. I'm intrigued. Did this conversation really come to pass? <laughs> I've never heard anyone mention that the Decalite reflection barrier could eavesdrop on even the quietest whispers. It appears that the Marshal sent not just two generals to the Luofu, but an uninvited third guest as well. <laughs> oh, people have been saying that Mr. Jing Yuan's intellect shines as brightly as the Seer strategists. Hmm. With the Luofu caught in such strife, the Yuchui couldn't just stand by and watch. <sighs> Seer strategist, our time with the Yellow Bell is limited. Let's get straight to the point. All right. Thanks to Mr. Jing Yuan, the interrogation of the two prisoners on the Yuchui has concluded. Mr. Jing Yuan's speculations were correct. Of the crimes they confessed to, planting a Stellaron on the La Fu was a complete fabrication meant to mislead. Their real aim was to secure a meeting with the Marshal to present their Godslayer Protocol, a strategy they firmly believe in. And what was this grand strategy proposed by Jing Liu and that traveler? <sighs> the narrative they painted was vast and difficult to put into words. It all revolves around the coffin of the blonde traveler. To be precise, it's the remnants of the propagation. The remains of the swarm author? More accurately, it's a fragment of the divine body. In the future they depicted, this fragment serves as the final nail, sealing the fate of the plague's author and securing its doom. Before reaching that point, battling the gods necessitates a larger alliance. Hence, they sought out an ally for the Sianjo. I assume you've all heard of the famed Genius Society member number 81, Ron May, haven't you? The I of the Yuchui has just seen this uninvited guest arrive on the Sianjo Lafu. Three, two, one. Right on time. Now, as for the best way to receive our distinguished guest, I'll leave that in your capable hands. Do you remember your name? My name is... Ting Yun. I serve as an amicassador of the Whistling Flames Merchant Guild on the Xianzhou Lafu.